My name is Gigi and I am the co-founder and director of Awakened Living Academy and a conscious relationship coach. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about anxious attachment style, the one who is always afraid secretly most of the time of losing love and connection with the other person. You're going to learn how to identify the typical behavior of someone of this type, find out if you are someone of this type, and if you're dating someone of this type, how to go ahead and have the best relationship with them, and how to best approach a relationship if you are the anxious attached to yourself. So let's begin. How do you identify if you or someone you know is an anxious attacher? When you have anxious attachment style, it feels like you can never truly just relax in your relationship unless your partner is giving you the assurance that everything is okay a lot of the time. Otherwise, what honestly happens for you in your system is you start to default into thinking that something must be wrong. And it's really hard to not convince yourself of that, right? So how do you know if you're an anxious attacher? There is a really, I think, a really good simple example here is have you ever texted someone that you really, really liked, you're dating, and they left you waiting for a few hours? Ask yourself, what were the first few reactions that you had when that happens? When this happens, do you start to worry that maybe you did something wrong or that something happened to them? This kind of negative inner voice dialogue is common for those with anxious attachment style and it causes a lot of stress for them and their partner. Unfortunately, that is where the anxious attacher lives most of their life, in the space of, but what if I'm right? You know, what if there is something wrong? What if truly I am not lovable or I'm not really good enough? Or if I was just skinnier or had more muscle or was better looking or had a better job or money or a better car or academic credentials or more Instagram followers, right? All of these things, then I would be enough and you would love me. And so there is this constant self-doubt and worry, even if it's subtle, even if it's just under the radar, it's pretty consistent anxiety that we aren't doing it right and we're going to be found out. So what's really going on here is that more than anything, what the anxious attacher wants is to know that they are loved, that they are cherished and safe with their partner and that they will not be abandoned. Okay, so you can say that everyone has these needs, but for an anxious attacher, it is crucial that these needs are always met and that they need to feel safe all the time. Now, if you are relating to this, if it sounds like you, know that you are not alone. Two out of every 10 people fall into this bucket. And there are simple steps that you can take to have a harmonious, loving relationship. I'm gonna share with you, if you're an anxious attacher, your best approach to a relationship is to start listening to the mental script that plays in your head and know that this script of self-doubt and of worrying is there because your early caregivers did love you and did give you so much love, but they also were incredibly good at pulling away their love if you didn't do exactly or what they wanted or if you didn't have the same opinion or if you didn't show up this the exact way that they wanted it they would have a way of shutting down and taking away their love and so your nervous system as a child as an infant 
did not have a space of safety. You didn't know reliably when you can count on someone's love. That post-traumatic stress almost has now has you in that same script. So any time someone pushes the trigger in you, you start worrying right away. For example, maybe you secretly worry that your partner isn't totally into you or is going to cheat on you or is mad at you for one reason or another. Begin to see that you are always on high alert, worried that either something is wrong with the relationship or something will go wrong. Once you realize that your mind is going down the same negative spiral, you can start to understand that your mind does not know that what it's thinking is not true. Your mind does not know that what it is thinking is not true. You know it. You can start to make new choices. And it's really as simple and as hard as remembering to speak to the mind in a loving voice, just like a parent, just the way that you would have wanted your parent to speak to you when you weren't doing the right thing. So you speak to your mind in a kind voice. Hey, mind. Are you doing the same thing again, sweetheart? I think you are. You know, is this thought that you're thinking, is this worrying that you're worrying about, is it even true? Do you have any evidence for it? And if you don't know if it's absolutely true, then why are we giving so much energy to this, sweetheart? That's how you want to talk to your mind because your mind says, because it's true, right? And it's difficult at first to be with a mind that is incessantly convincing you that something is true, but keep at it with love. The part of you that knows it's not true can show up. The part within you that speaks meanly to you, that tells you that you're not good enough, that you're not lovable, that you're not worthy, you talk to that part in a sweet way. And the healing will happen and you will be able to attract those in your life that speak to you the same way. Know that you will keep pulling to you people who treat you the same way that you secretly treat yourself inside of yourself. And if you're not noticing, then start slowing down enough to listen to how you speak to yourself. So to summarize those few points, every time you think a mean thought to yourself, replace it with a positive thought. You'll start seeing your anxiety lessen and you'll be at more peace in your relationships. So how do you pick a partner when you have anxious attachment? I bet you that as an anxious attacher, that most, if not all of your relationships have been relationships where your your partner was exhibiting the same type of behavior as your primary caregivers, which give you love and then take it away and shut down, put you on a pedestal and then drop you down, right? So this is going to keep happening unless you know that 50% of the population are secure attachers. Secure attachers are the ones that you want to be with. Secure attachers are the ones who have been brought up in a family that was consistently loving. And so the way that they love is consistently loving. What if you found a love that doesn't need you to do anything differently for them to love you? Believe me, there are people out there who will love you consistently. They're actually, again, 50% of the population while anxious attachers are 20% and avoidant attachers are 30%. But the reason that anxious attachers are usually attracted to avoidant attachers is because they're used to love meaning a certain thing, like we said, from their early caregivers. So that is why subconsciously the anxious attacher would not be interested in someone who consistently gives them love and attention because it's not familiar to them. You make it familiar to yourself by the way that you treat yourself. You make sweetness and kindness familiar again. So anxious attacher, sweetheart, are you listening? Can you please try to locate the people in your life 
that do not pull away their love from you. The people who are always 100% consistent with their friendship and love. Those are the people you need to run to. Those are the people you need to start learning how to become attracted to. Ask yourself, are they loving me consistently? That is your magic question to see if you're doing it again or not. Are you back to your old addictive behaviors or not? So are they loving me consistently? Or do they turn their love on and off? Is their love based on how they're feeling today? Or what's convenient for them? Or do they love me consistently? Because that is possible. Finally, I'll give you a few tips for how to date someone who has anxious attachment. So we've talked directly to the anxious attachers out there, but what if you're not anxiously attached yourself? What if you're dating someone who is? Well, if you're the one who's in a relationship with an anxious attacher, it's so simple, really. Give them what they want. And what they want is pretty simple. Give them the assurance in whatever way resonates for them the most. Sometimes that is through consistently sending them a loving text message, verbally letting them know how much you adore them when you see them, consistent daily reassurances that calms their nervous system. Remember, they they have PTSD. They cannot rely on love when it comes because in their experience, Love always meant some type of disconnection. So have them watch this video so that they can understand how to regulate their emotions. They could understand that when they start getting nervous and they start calling you six times in a row, that they can ask themselves, hey, is this thought really true? Do I really need to go down that path that irritates my partner or makes them feel like I'm out of control? And also for you, if you're dating the anxious partner, give them what they need, but give them what they need as long as it meets your boundaries, what feels good for you. Also understand though, that sometimes what feels good for you is not what feels good for them. For example, some people like the way that they show love, for example, is to give gifts where an anxious attacher, it would be way better for them if you gave them a kind word every day, okay? So sometimes you really have to understand what your partner needs versus what you like to give because those are two different things. So to wrap things up, if you recognize yourself in this video as someone who's anxiously attached, start noticing the negative thoughts as they come up and replace them with positive ones. Speak to your inner critic in a calm, loving voice. Rewire your nervous system. Speak to yourself the way you would speak to your child who's hurting. Know that your tendency is to be with a partner who is inconsistent with their love for you simply because that is what feels safe and what you've been used to all your life. But moving forward, know know that it is safe to be with someone who is consistently giving you the love that you need and start actively spending time with more people like this. Please invest in getting help with someone as soon as you can. Learning online like this and through books is the second best possible way. Yes, getting help does cost money, But think of what your life, your relationships, and your future will be like when this old mental script no longer has power over you. Thank you so much for joining me here. And if you found this helpful, be sure to subscribe to get plenty of helpful tips on how to create and thrive in your dream relationship.